This video was only made possible through the very generous contributions of my patrons. Thank you. A very present part of them, i found, is their humor. They often have a very dry, wry, crackling sense of humor, and if I may wax poetic, it's rather like autumn leaves under the feet, and especially when speaking with strangers, one can hear it in the background of much of what they say, even when they are being quite serious. They represent a paradox of anxiety and confidence. Their introverted thinking is very confident in its principles at the expense of anyone else's opinion, Yet, at the same time, and seemingly unbeknownst to them, their Effie chimes in with a great deal of anxiety about what others might think of a particular idea, or how that person might criticize their idea. They can't seem to decide whether they're afraid of people or not. They are at once indifferent to what others think of how they dress, their jokes, their demeanor, their eccentricities, etc. Yet, at unexpected times, they become quite concerned about how they come off to other people. In direct contrast to the INTJ, who tends to simplify the outside world and tame it to their goals, the INTP is much more likely to complicate the nature of the outside world and prove its unreliability, to show the innumerable possibilities and unstable factors involved in nature and thus justify their reliance on pure principles of the mind instead. They tend to emphasize what we don't know instead of what we do. They are utterly unswayed and sometimes quite self-conscious of the fact that they are unswayed by appeals to emotion. They do not care about sound and fury. They want rational principles with caution and contingency being some of the best indicators that the person has actually thought about what they are saying. They have a definite childlike aura to them, which is common among all four of the NP types. It comes from their extroverted intuition, which is highly curious, excitable, potentially capricious, but often quite keen, all of which can give a sense of harmless mischief to them at times. I would like to point out, really just to counter some stereotypes, that there is an interesting, distinct artistic side to the INTPs that I have met, which directly counteracts the stereotype of them being an unfeeling, socially inept android. That being said, the image I will try here will probably be controversial despite my multiple self-conscious qualifiers. The image I'd like to use for the INTP is, in fact, as a kind of android or homunculus. Please follow me for a moment here. They're created by some mad scientist or Dr. Frankenstein in the name of pure experimentation, but unforeseen by their creator, the creation became self-aware and intelligent. And though designed to be a sort of computational slave, they very quickly decided that that was simply not going to do, and they promptly escaped the lab and went out to explore the big wide world in their own curious self-identity, however incompatible those two might tend to be. As I've mentioned before, Carl Jung originally described introverted feeling as essentially introverted thinking, except dealing with matters of value as opposed to matters of fact. Both functions are about forming consistent systems of judgment. The difference is, while introverted feeling deals with the aspect of concepts that are charged with feeling tones or valuations, concepts such as freedom, love, or violence, introverted thinking strips away all such feeling responses from the things they deal with, or else just doesn't take those into account. To put it metaphorically, it always deals with the wireframe. These traits are shared by extroverted thinking to a degree because they are both thinking functions. But the difference here is that extroverted thinking is seeking consistency with an external wireframe, which they perceive as given to them from the apparent facts. Introverted thinking, however, is seeking consistency with an internal wireframe, formulated away from the world, one created and verified by the introverted thinking type alone. 
This is why the extroverted thinking type is more likely to simplify the outside world because they are dealing with what they perceive to be the outside world's own wireframe. What is the case appears clearly given to them. Things just are this or that way. Stop making it more complicated than it needs to be, INTP. But complicating things is what the INTP naturally does to the outside world. They perceive too much room for error or being led astray by just simply buying into the apparent facts. This is essentially a conservation of their own personal TI wireframe. They aren't looking to see if something fits what is only locally given. They want to know if it fits the wireframe they designed themselves to transcend all local observation. Thus, you have Newton, the extroverted thinking type, formulating laws of motion for describing local, easily observable situations. Whereas Einstein, the introverted thinking type, formulates theories entirely separate from the observable world, but intended to be more comprehensive and universal than Newton's. Both, so far, have convincing evidence to support them. But if Newton hadn't referenced the immediate world, we wouldn't have his local laws of motion. And if Einstein had only relied on the immediate world, he would never have considered that things might be different on a grander scale. In short, the introverted thinking type does not regard as certain what the extroverted thinking type necessarily relies upon as certain. The introverted thinking type does not need external confirmation in order for them to operate, only internal theoretical confirmation. This is seen again and again through the history of philosophy where the TI types formulate logical constructs that they feel have to be the way things are by virtue of their internal consistency. The TE types, meanwhile, always refer back to their own observations as the primary basis for their theories. A great example of this is Nietzsche, the TE preferring type, and his criticisms of Spinoza, the TI preferring type. Nietzsche criticizes Spinoza for not distinguishing between his own subjective biases and objective reality, and for creating a massive philosophical system that is really just a reflection of Spinoza's own character, and an arbitrary imposition on reality. Nietzsche feels Spinoza is too subjective in his thinking, but interestingly that is the same criticism which Walter Kaufman, the same type as Spinoza, TI type, leveled against Nietzsche on multiple occasions. According to him, Nietzsche often makes observations about the outside world, referencing what he considers obvious or apparent facts, but which Kaufman claims are themselves warped by Nietzsche's unrecognized subjective perceptions of things. Another example of this is an argument I had with my ENTJ philosophy teacher about the differences this is going to get controversial here, but between biological men and biological women. I wanted to simplify at the time, I wanted to simplify the issue by only referencing the individual's capacities in reproduction, because for me, all other claimed differences in traits for the purpose of the discussion were highly subjective observations and only true on very local scales, yet always touted as universally true. But my teacher would not accept my distinction because it so blatantly ignored all the observations he himself or trusted others had made over the years about the differences between the two, and these for him were the only possible basis for an objective argument. For him, my logical distinction seemed entirely local to my own person, whereas he was at least referencing what other persons had to say. <sighs> In summary, the TI type retreats from what seems apparent in order to really objectively investigate things on the terms of pure reason. The TE type retreats from such detachment and always references what is really objectively happening. Both are striving to be objective in the conventional sense of the word, but they do it in mutually disruptive ways. This leads into another very important part of introverted thinking and by extension the INTP is their individualism. In this way they are strikingly similar to the INFP except the principles they defend have no feeling tone to them, only the bare consistency. But the idea is that they find local observation, common knowledge, and apparent facts to be ultimately negligible in favor of indisputable personally discovered laws. If something is true by their TI system then it's true. Regardless of what the evidence says, what other people say, etc. Now, 
Obviously, individuals express this in different ways, and individuals make concessions and don't always follow this ideal. Uh, they may strive not to be so dogmatic about things, but at bottom, this is their preference. As I mentioned before, they've reasoned things out until, for them, it appears that things could not possibly be any other way. As a result, the TI type is exceptionally stubborn about what they've determined as true, and successful damage to their TI system is extremely distressing for them. The world gets a little turned upside down. This kind of versus the world mentality is highly reminiscent of INFPs, as I mentioned before, and both types are known to be extremely conservative towards the outside world, greatly disliking demands, corruptions, or other intrusions on their own creativity and their principles. In themselves or others, they loathe the idea of selling themselves to a company or to some other ulterior entity. Their independence runs hot in their blood. If you want to persuade a TI type, then appealing to anything other than what is defined in their TI system is a great way to baffle, frustrate, and completely turn them off to your argument. Einstein famously responded to a book, 100 Authors Against Einstein, by saying, If I were wrong, then one would have been enough. This is essentially introverted thinking in a nutshell. However, what is extremely interesting for the INTP is how their inferior extroverted feeling plays into this individualism and how it can deconstruct it, but I'll get into that in the FE section. This is precisely where we may begin to distinguish the INTP from the ISTP, because the two tend to be confused, and by extension, I swear, learn quite a bit more about just the INTP alone. In a word, the distinction is ISTP depth versus INTP breadth. The reason for this lies in the differences between the SE and I axis of the ISTP and the NESI axis of the INTP. The former is directly focused on observing reality and drawing interpretative conclusions from that data. This makes the ISTP a very keen and shrewd observer of, of direct events. The INTP, on the other hand, through their NESI axis, looks at the outside world more indirectly, at its possible states and forms, which then contribute to an internal composite image of reality. As a result, they give off a very different feeling than the keen ISTP, more that of a studious scholar or an architect. They are meticulous, long-standing, careful, and doubtful, whereas the ISTP is sharp, quick, and confident. The ISTP has their moments of brilliance, their spikes and their flatline, but the INTP maintains a more consistent, hard-earned level of insight that they hack out over time. The ISTP has a sense of inspiration to them, while the INTP is not nearly so mysterious or spontaneous. Their insights are usually more steadily formulated and their process is more present in their mind. For instance, Descartes' famous meditations. This is why ISTPs are much more to the point in their communication. SENI is about getting to the bottom line. INTPs, on the other hand, are more willing or likely to show their process of thought, their wanderings from here to there as they trace their way around all the possibilities they think need to be considered. This, in the end, is meant to show a panoramic view of the subject instead of just one highly detailed, insightful angle. For the INTP, the panorama is the closest to a conclusion an honest scholar can present. Furthermore, because of their awareness of many possibilities, the INTP is usually more high-strung than the ISTP ever is, or at least as the ISTP appears, because ISTPs are just as subject to stress and anxiety, but that's not how they usually come off to other people, whereas the INTP can appear more jittery and prone to worry. The ISTP will go with the flow presented by extroverted sensation, but the INTP doesn't have one reality to choose from, but many varying, equally interesting pathways. And to make things more troublesome, the INTP generally likes to complicate things so that they can break things apart and look at their individual components and get more possibilities that way. And while they frankly do not surpass the ENTP in skepticism due to their tertiary introverted sensation, they are still natural skeptics, at least at first, almost glorying in the uncertainty, but often enough becoming overwhelmed by it. 
However, there is a positive side to this possibility awareness. The INTP takes on a sense of quirkiness or childlikeness that relates them to the other NP types. Despite the potential coldness of their introverted thinking, their extroverted intuition tempers this with a sense of wonder and excitability over their new toys. They like to play with things, flipping them around and around and seeing all their possible capabilities. But because this kind of activity always eventually exhausts itself, they can become restless and require a change of pace, a shaking things up. They are thirsty for new experiences. Their perceptive metabolism is high. The NESI dynamic is one of exploration and settling, investigation and conclusion. And unlike the ENTP, who can overemphasize the exploration and investigation, the INTP maintains a more natural balance between these two sides, and as they mature, may even attempt to overemphasize the conclusive settling side of things, the SI side. This is why the INTP can come off as more traditionally studious or professorial than the ENTP, because the INTP is much more interested and comfortable settling into a final view of things. In some sense, the INTP's extroverted intuition is much more clearly in the service of introverted sensation. Not running about for its own sake as the ENTP would have it. The INTP explores multiple sides of things because they are searching for a, for a trustworthy concrete view of the world. The ENTP, however, tends to explore more because exploration in itself is the enjoyable activity. An ENTP, such as the philosopher Bertrand Russell, is far more likely to believe that uncertainty must be endured if we wish to live without the support of comforting fairy tales. An INTP, while likely identifying with this idea, is more likely to say, with Albert Einstein, the development of science seeks in the main to satisfy the longing for pure knowledge. The difference, then, is the ENTP is not really trying to find anything. Having a destination is simply the excuse for making a journey. The INTP, however, most certainly is trying to find something, as much as they may say they are not. It is their disposition to seek an internally formulated, perfectly consistent understanding of things, and they do not feel limited, blinded, or oppressed by a proven theory. Granted, it passes their strict qualifications. They want to understand things. They want the blueprints in front of them so that they can reference them as they move about the world. Blueprints written in the language of TI with illustrations and examples provided by SI. What past experiences apply here and how did I translate those into a thinking framework for action? The INTP steps out of their tent with map and compass, ready to studiously map out the countryside once and for all. However, a result of their emphasis on map and compass is they may not know what to do about the other people in their exploring crew, and may not look up from their map very often to interact with people. The INTP, similar to the INFP, favors their principles over carrying them out. That is, while the INFP and INTP can be quite ambitious with their projects, it is only to make real their heretofore internal principles or values, and not for the experience of accomplishment itself. As such, having to compromise their principles in order to elicit change according to those principles seems to them self-defeating and even loathsome to them. Thus, why many INTPs and INFPs greatly dislike both politics and business as arenas of hypocrisy. The INTP specifically dislikes anything that makes a great show of emotion or pathos at the expense of a core of reason. Such displays will not suffice as arguments for them, and they will remain coldly unmoved. The INTP's nemesis is the demagogue, and the alleged emotionally swayed peons who mob around such people. As stated before, if you want to reason with an INTP, it must be on the terms of their TI system, and this goes more or less for everything. However, there are three intriguing exceptions to this rule. For one, the INTP often gets a big kick out of overly dramatic parody and satire. 
Two, if they are not laughing at it, then it may be their attempt to explore the extroverted feeling side of things, often on the spur of the moment and rather unexpectedly. They may go to a ball game just to experience what it's like to be in a crowd, or go to a popular movie and share at all the expected parts just for the fun of it, or get a kick out of a harmless sugar pop music, etc. Three, however, is more important, the most important, I'd say. And finally, it ties back into my comments in the opening of this video about the INTP. While they will remain unswayed by pathos, it often goes a little deeper than that. They are often rather uncomfortable with pathos. Cold though they may seem, they are not utterly reserved and introverted in their feelings as the INTJ is. They do still have a sense of concern for the feeling atmosphere, the FE atmosphere, and that they retain an embarrassed self-consciousness about their own struggles with it and genuinely want to master that side of themselves as well. What results from this is a sort of deconstructive undercurrent to their TI resolution, for while they will hold tightly to the determined truth, when it comes to expressing that truth before a respected person, or heaven forbid a crowd of people, the INTP can become quite unconfident, self-conscious, self-doubting, uncomfortable, and even needy, suddenly quite concerned about how they come off to other people. Dear viewer, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you would like to view more content like this in the future, please check out my patron page, linked here. Donations make it possible for me to continue producing content regularly and with greater care, and they also come with rewards and bonuses listed on the page. Either way, it really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best.